All right, we want to start right now with some breaking news in Southeast Portland, a big fire at Portland Garment Factory. This is on 79th and Stark. There are more than 70 firefighters on the scene. On the left of your screen is the live shot from our photographer Eric Patterson and on the right is video from earlier. It really shows what firefighters were up against when they responded to this call. This came in around 3.30 this morning. Wow, look at those flames. They're all coming from the second floor. Also involved, two nearby businesses, Redwood Vintage Cocktail and the Bipartisan Cafe. Eric Patterson telling us that part of those businesses are also on fire. We did hear from Portland fire officials a little while ago. They say they're bringing in extra engines and crews to put this out. We will stay on this all morning long and bring you updates as soon as we get them. Another story we're following Marine Drive also closed right now in North Portland near Kelly Point Park. A motorcycle and a car crashed overnight just after midnight and the motorcycle rider died. Police say at the time there were about 350 people in the area for an illegal street race. Officers expect this closure of Marine Drive to last a while. Today, everyone 16 and up in Oregon can get their COVID vaccine. It's the next step in the rollout after the state crossed a major milestone. That's right, Nina. At least one and a half million people in Oregon have gotten at least one shot so far. And those numbers could jump pretty quickly now that younger people have their chance to get vaccinated. Governor Kate Brown is encouraging people not only to make their own appointments, but to help other people get signed up too. And as the eligibility pool grows, COVID cases are also back on the rise. Oregon reported at least 628 new cases yesterday. There were no new deaths reported yesterday, though. There's a lot of information we know out there right now when it comes to the vaccine. So here's the deal. We have resources for you at KGW.com. You can hop on our website and find different ways to get signed up to get your shot. Brian Clerkley is covering this this morning. We'll have much more for us coming up in our next half hour. Well, as the vaccination effort ramps up here in Oregon and Washington, the U.S. hit a new benchmark over the weekend. According to new data from the CDC, half of all adults in the U.S. have gotten at least one shot. That's 130 million people. The data released also shows 84 million people are fully vaccinated. A group of high school students is offering help to get connected to the vaccine appointments. The new tool just launched. It's called Portland Student Pandemic Response, also known as PSPR. It's a text line for Oregonians to find an appointment to get a COVID shot. Here's what you need to do. The first is texting the word vaccine to 850-367-7033. The second is checking your eligibility with the Oregon Health Authority link that will pop up after you text. And the third is entering a zip code, either your own or one near you, and a list of vaccine appointments will pop up. Again, that number to text is 850-357-7033. PSPR has worked on a number of service projects during the pandemic, including donating PPE, and helping people navigate food assistance programs. Well, this is a big week for older students throughout the state. Several districts kick off hybrid learning for middle and high schoolers. That includes Portland, Beaverton, and Tigard Tualatin. They're responding to Governor Brown's executive order, asking all schools to have some sort of hybrid learning plan in place by this week. Let's get to three more things to know about COVID this morning. Number one, it's not just Oregon. All Americans 16 and older are eligible for the COVID vaccine starting today. President Biden set the deadline for today for all states to open up eligibility. Of course, the White House has made it very clear that this doesn't mean all Americans will get the vaccine today. We know that, right? It just means everyone can join the line. Number two, the virus has now killed more than three million people globally. For some perspective, that's nearly three quarters of Oregon's entire population. The U.S. still has the highest death toll of any country with over 500,000. The next highest country is Brazil with 369,000 deaths. And number three, NBC aired a special to aim or aimed that is to educate and raise awareness about the vaccine. So we saw Hollywood hotshots, political power figures, athletes all stepping up to lend their support to this. 
the Obamas, J. Lo, Charles Barkley, Shaquille O'Neal, they were among those who participated. And Matthew McConaughey, you see him right there, he hosted a Q&A with Dr. Anthony Fauci to dispel concerns. You said people who say, look, I, I, I don't fit the criteria to get vaccinated. This is a vaccine that is appropriate for everybody and anyone. This will save lives and allow people to get their lives back to normal. And the, the sooner we get more people vaccinated, the better off we're gonna be. That special was made in partnership with Walgreens and the Civic Nations Made to Save initiative. And those are three things to know about COVID this morning. Well, this morning, new insight into the deadly police shooting in Portland's Lentz Park from Friday. It started with a report of a man pointing a gun at people in the park. KGW's Tim Gordon spoke with a witness who says he saw what happened and then when officers arrived. People have placed flowers at a memorial for Robert Douglas Delgado. Delgado is the man police came to check out in Lentz Park. It ended with both less lethal and lethal force used against the 46-year-old Portlander. Delgado died of a single gunshot. It's really tough because it happened all right next to me, right next to me, right next to my truck. David Hernandez videotaped the deadly ordeal. We're showing you just a little of the 11-minute clip to see his perspective. A few hours before the police confrontation, Hernandez says he and his partner were at the park and noticed a tent in the grass nearby. Then Delgado, who they did not know, came from the tent to visit. But he bumped a couple of cigarettes from us, um, and we kicked it and showed a few moments of our life just talking. He seemed like a really cool guy. Um, he wasn't on drugs, he didn't smell like alcohol. At that time, Hernandez um, said he noticed Delgado had a gun, but that it wasn't loaded. Went, went Sources have told the Oregonian that police recovered a replica with an orange tip on it. The investigation is far from over. But family members described Delgado to the Oregonian as a sweet man who lived a troubled life, suffering from mental illness and substance abuse. Mental health advocates say more help is needed for those in crisis. As you have people who have both the mental health background uh, and the connections to the community, the connections to resources that you need to really contact people and figure out what it is they need to get them out of that place of crisis. Um, that's another thing that we'd really like to see funded. And then I really think housing is also an incredibly crucial component of it, too. Delgado was houseless, and so is David Hernandez, who has shared his video with police and expects to be called in as a witness. What I'm going to go there to do is tell them the exact truth. That's all I can do. The truth, as he saw it, of something he'll never forget. I spent a few moments of my life with this person to get to know him a little bit and interact and he's gone. It's tough. Tim Gordon, KGW News. All right, we have one more local story before we get to Rod's forecast. Brenda, fire investigators are still trying to figure out the cause of a 40-acre brush fire that started in Clackamas County on Friday. They do say that they should know more by today. Well, I guess the good news is that all evacuation orders were lifted over the right. weekend. Flames broke out Friday afternoon near Oregon City, threatening at least 17 homes and injuring one firefighter. We are in for some more warm, windy weather with lower humidity, and authorities say they need your help to keep everyone safe. We need the public's help and, and really being responsible with the use of, of burning and, and fire. Uh, be aware of your conditions, and certainly as these events tend to unfold throughout the summer, be aware of, of the evacuation levels and what they mean. That was critically important last year in 2020. The Red Cross says it's a good time to make sure you have an emergency to go kit filled with things like your prescription medication. OK, we are going to see some lower temperatures later this week. Rod, what else no. do we need to know starting, about the weather? Starting today, actually, uh, cooler temperatures. Um, uh, no red flag warnings today. Fire danger technically is considered to be much lower than it was over the weekend and back to last week when we had east winds and the highs in the 80s. But keep in mind, we're still bone dry. so. Uh, you know, just logic would tell you it still wouldn't take much to spark a fire until we get some much needed rainfall. All right, here we go. I mentioned cooler weather starts today. We have clouds offshore. There's some clouds over the Cascades this morning and inland along the beach. 
so we won't have that perfectly clear day that we've been having lately, but still very, very nice. Future cast at 10 o'clock this morning shows some cloudiness coming in. This shows some thicker clouds at 8 p.m. This may be overdone. I expect this to start off sunny and then to be partly cloudy later today into this evening and then tomorrow. We're back to just a couple of perfectly clear sky days. Here are the temperatures really comfortable out this morning. Uh, 43 Sandy, 46 Vancouver, 40 out in Hillsboro. And we have temperatures in the mid 40s in Kaiser and Salem. Again, should be a, a pretty sunny start to our day. Temperatures instead of being up into the 80s, the weekend went 84 and 83 for Portland. We'll be in the low to mid 70s from Corvallis up through McMinnville. Most people, I think, consider that to be very comfortable. Hope you're one of them. 74 in Vancouver and 74 degrees in Van, uh, up in Kelso. East winds will be breezy out in the gorge today and maybe near the gorge in East Multnomah County. Uh, here's that dry weather. Dry weather until we get to the weekend where we have hopes to get some rain. I know it's a weekend, but we need some rain.